And you know, I, I feel like with a lot of this, you know, um, teaching them how to, to flex and drive and do all that, I feel like you get a really good feel for that horse's uh, personality as far as how they react to pressure, how they deal with pressure. Um, it, it, when they're a little bit confined or they're in a little bit of a tight spot, maybe close to the wall and you're asking them to turn and asking them to do things, uh, do, do they get a little... Gives me an opportunity to just work on my, start working on some of my half turns and being able to use some forward motion. Source is really fine and a good balance. Uses himself well behind. Oh. When I release the pressure of, of my body driving him forward, I really want him to, um, I want him to take that time, that's his time to stand there, relax, whether it's a cutting horse, reining horse, you know, our cow horses. Um, a horse backing up is probably one of the more unnatural things for them to do. It's not something that comes instinctual to them. Um, and so I, I feel like that's something that I've really tried to concentrate on uh, is, is these colts learning to back up um, softly uh, and, and changing things up. You know, whether we're working a cow and we back a circle on them or whether we're actually asking them to back up straight, um, I'm asking them to stay in between my lines. So wherever I go in the pen, I want them to start finding their way to me. Um, and if they can do that softly, then I, to me, I have, I have all four corners starting to work in the right direction. Moving their hind end well, they're stepping with their front feet, they're not leaving their front feet out there dragging and pulling on my hands, they're just softly backing up with me. So if I can and be able to, and be able to kind of follow me where I'm asking him to back, I have to have control of all that. So if he wants to push that hip over there a little bit, when he moves that hip back up underneath him in order to follow me, 